Okay, we're back here inside the cube, our flagship program, go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. This is SiliconAngle.com's coverage of O'Reilly Media's Strata Conference in Silicon Valley, in the heart of big data innovation right now, and that's Santa Clara, California. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here with Jim Stod Stogdill, who is the general manager of the O'Reilly Strata Conferences. And we've been at every Santa Clara uh, O'Reilly Conference, and the, the Strata Conference. And uh, one or two in New York. So, first of all, Jim, thanks for having us, and sure. uh, thanks for coming on the cube. Yeah, glad to be here. So, the big franchise Strata has really exploded, and just I remember the first inaugural one. Maureen had us uh, in the other hallway where the food was going by, and <laughs> behind the camera was all the food trucks and the red phone. Uh, it was the only spot because it was, it was already sold out because it brought together, you know, the data science and geek community, but also it instantly attracted a lot of the business side of it. So, I think kind of we saw lightning in a bottle yeah, kind of yeah. at the same time. You guys saw that and expanded. So take us through the journey uh, of the Strata franchise and, and where it's come from and where it is now and what your plans are evolving. Yeah, so, um, well, we're not, we're doing four per year now. Uh, we're in London, Santa Clara, uh, um, New York, and Boston now this year. Um, and we're beginning to sort of explore the verticals. So Boston is about uh, healthcare and it's just, taken off like a train. Um, and the point you made about the, the business part of it is really, I think, really interesting to us, is that this is sort of our first series of events that really early on attracted a business audience. If we look at OSCON or others, that came later, but it was very much a developer audience early and often. Um, from the very beginning, we've been attracting a business audience here. We did a data-driven business day yesterday, and 80% of the room was MBAs, which is different for us, that's a different audience for us to pull I mean, it's interesting, I mean, we had Tim on earlier, and Tim, we love talking to Tim because we kind of can blend, it's like a helicopter, you go really high in the clouds, mm -hmm. you can get down in, into the weeds, and we, you know, we're talking about this, this confluence of science, art, and math, and, and, and dis multi-disciplines, but at the end of the day, he said open source is where a lot of his thinking came from, yeah. so, you know, in an open source world, you have that skills gap issue, so you guys are putting on, in essence, kind of like MBA-like programs yeah. for people. Um, Ed, uh, Alistair's taking us through the, uh, the data-driven business side and also an IT piece. Mm -hmm. They're like workshops. And so do you, are you finding that the demand for the skills are a, a key driver? Is that one of the things that's attracting people? Or is it the business opportunities, the startups, all of the above? I or? think it's all of the above. I mean, people, um, there aren't enough people out there that understand how this stuff works. There aren't enough people who understand what to do with it. And I think that's the real interesting part for the business people. It's not just sort of, um, what are the technologies, how do they fit into our world, it's really what does it mean to our business model. Uh, you know, that everybody says over and over again the software eats the world, that quote. Um, <laughs> but I think people are starting to realize that what that means is that their business has to do different stuff. Um, and, but they're having trouble conceptualizing it. You know, they sort of hear the tools, Hadoop, Hadoop, Hadoop. What does that mean in terms of how can our business model actually adapt? What do you see that's different um, in Europe? You, you, you've done the one conference in London, correct? And yeah. this will be a second uh, upcoming. Are there market differences, or is it is the great similarities now that we live in well, this global world? E each of our events um, does have some specificity in the audience. You know, like if we were going to call these things different names, you know, this would almost be like Strata Web. We have a lot of audience here for that. Uh, Stra you, sorry, sorry. Strata Web. Web. You know, yeah, we okay. don't call it that, we don't think of it that yeah, way, right. but you could yeah. almost think of it, it that way. It attracts that kind of demographic, yep. demographic. Whereas in New York, for example, a significant part of the audience there is finance. Yep. Um, also, we get a lot of media there. Um, London also has a fair amount of finance, but there's also a, a quite a um, strong showing from sort of the, the government sector there. Government in the in, uh, UK has been doing a lot with open data, a lot with data analytics. Uh, newspapers and other, uh, The Guardian has done a lot with data journalism over there, so we get a big presence of, um, and focus from so that. So London's probably the most interesting in terms of the melting pot. You probably get a little bit of all that rolled in yeah, there. Yeah, right? it's, it's, it is a sort of a, it has a little bit different flavor that way, yeah. Yeah, in Boston, obviously, with the, the, the pharma and life sciences, you know, the healthcare piece is mm -hmm. going to be very interesting. I didn't attend last year, but it, we'll be there this year. RX has a, you should, you should check it out. It's, yeah. a, it's got a very different flavor. Um, 
the, the feeling is, you know, the, either it's still a data meets a particular problem kind of play, but we get a chance to go much deeper into looking at genomics and things like that and sort of, it's, it's, an, inter it's, a, it's an interesting subset of the world, yeah. So, talk about, uh, some more about the evolution of, of Strata. I mean, you are general manager of the Strata events, right? And so, so a few years ago, this job didn't exist. <laughs> That's true, right? so I took over this job uh, just just at the end of last year. Mm -hmm. I've been with O'Reilly since last May. Um, so I have, I, while I've attended every Strata, it was previously as a customer. Um, and, um, but it, the, uh, I, I guess, um, first of all, it's not just the conferences, it's a whole pr practice area we're building yeah, around yeah. the yeah, around research the, and the, all the other stuff you guys yeah, do. And we, you know, radar. Our, our publishing is still very active in the space as yeah. well. So yep. um, a big part of my job is to figure out how those things kind of fit together and serve this audience. And, and again, this new audience, which is the business folks. Um, but in terms of the evolution, I mean, the, the number of people coming to these events. Is so take us through the range of the franchise. So obviously the events are key, because that's mm -hmm. where a lot of the face-to-face -face interaction happens, and mm -hmm. that's really positive. You have the, uh, the online piece, you have the website and all the resources online, and then you have the books. Mm -hmm. You also have the research side, we had Roger on. Is that also involved? Is that how the It's a part moved? of it, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just Did I miss anything? No, I think that, that, that's pretty oh, much okay. covers it. There's yeah. probably, you know, there's, there's some things in development, but yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that sort of covers what's, what's currently going out the door. Uh, this, this practice is still mostly the conferences is sort of how we're getting to our audience here. Um, the publishing is a big part of it, and we'll do, we'll do some other things coming soon. Have you guys looked at the social network? I mean, I, I, O'Reilly is a very loyal audience base. They have, obviously, the alpha geeks and you know, just a great credibility authority. Mm -hmm. um, are you guys looking at like any kind of like social network stickiness at all? Um, to bring in online or forums or enough of that? I mean, just yeah, we're, 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 I wouldn't call it social networks what we're looking at, but we are looking at ways to um, engage with the audience much more on an ongoing basis in sort of an association kind of style. Yeah. How about data? I mean, how do you, we hear a lot about you know, data-driven yeah. enterprises yeah. and, and how are you using data in your um, endeavor? Yeah, we're getting we're getting better at it, but it, there's a little bit of a co the cobbler shoes kind of kind of story involved. <laughs> oh, <here>. really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, if you talk to Roger, you you know our our data wizard on staff. Um, oh yeah, he's and um, phenomenal. We're getting a lot better at understanding who our audiences are, are, where they're coming from, and what we can do for them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Roger's great. We had him on yesterday. We were talking about the uh, cognitive uh, economics or behavioral economics uh, around around the crowd, and, and you know, he ad really clicking is a harbinger for that, which is he, he really has an interesting vision, and I think he's right on. We support him. We always kind of high five each other on the cube. It's yeah, like yeah. a love fest because we're in the same kind of mindset. But he has an interesting perspective on this whole social currency thing, where you, know, you have this, these new relationships forming at these events, and the events are actually a key part of it more than ever before. Because if you think about it, the content is sourceable. You guys yeah. are streaming everything, we're doing the cube here. Yeah, yeah. But so yeah, there's some base information, but a lot of the intimacy of the face-to-face -face becomes a key part of it. So he's yeah. all over that, so. Yeah, I think well, you know, one of the things we're thinking about really hard is the fact that demographically, we get people traveling to these, but the bulk of the people still come from reasonably local mm -hmm. um, to each of these events. Um, and, and, but, and the being face-to-face -face still really matters. So the question is, how do you get the entire audience of people that could be participating in something like this and replicate that face-to-face. -face. Have you looked at like the, uh, actually Ted does the TEDx <coughs> things where they do TED Silicon yeah. Valley. Um, when I first saw that, I first thought, you know, that could be a little bit of cannibalization, but yeah. um, do you think that has cannibalized TED a little bit or is that a, just an extension of their brand? I mean, O'Reilly has that level of brand yeah, value. it's an extension. I mean, and I think you'll see us do some things like that around Strata and our other events. We'll, we'll find ways to be local and out there. There's a lot of demand. I mean, there's yeah. a demand for the content in this market. Yeah. I mean, it's really high. Yeah. Um, because of just where it is on the yeah. evolution. I mean, yeah. you guys do any studies uh, around kind of, I mean, we were just joking earlier, like the exponential growth curve is kind of like the normal curve. Yeah. You know, where are we? Are we at the bottom? Are we, you know, how, yeah. I mean, are we on the, still in the flat part? We see uptick, but the angle I might be. I think there's a huge amount of growth because, through, and what's really key about this space is that the enterprise is going to adopt it full on, and it's not going to take 15 years like it did with open source for them to sort of let it sneak in as Linux through the back door, and eventually, yeah, yeah, right. you know what I mean, th this is coming in through the front door. It is forcing the enterprise to address right up front, we have to deal with open source, because most of these things are coming in the door as open source. Coming in the front but door, I, I kind of like see that. this as like a giant wave in a football stadium. It's starting in Silicon Valley, and it's moving east, and it's, you know, it's across the yeah. Atlantic, and it's into Europe now. And well, yeah. we, we are really proud to work with you guys. I just want to say to the folks out there, O'Reilly Media has been really fantastic to work with. They've uh, welcomed theCUBE in, 
uh, with open arms and, and uh, collaboration has been fantastic. Really glad and, to have you here. And uh, the quality and the professionalism from the O'Reilly team has just been uh, fantastic. Um, we're impressed, I mean, <laughs> you guys do such a great job, um, but it's only the beginning. So uh, uh, with that, my final question is, as you look out on the horizon 10 years from now, mm -hmm. um, the front door is going to be slammed with this wave, uh, big data. There's a lot of other vectors going on too. You got the consumerization of IT, yep, yep. you have instrumentation and industry disruption. So it's not just one industry. No, it's no. not like, oh, it's a, it's, a, it's a category, it's IT, technology. Right. It's all things, banks, yeah. consumers, integration. So, you know, do you have a, can you shoot the arrow forward five, 10 years in your mind's eye? And doesn't that mean, just kind of your view of that, that future? Yeah, um, I, I think that what we're going to see is with this combination of sort of the networks and the data behind them and all this thing, what we're essentially seeing uh, is the evolution of the corporation. You know, and I give this talk now and then, it's sort of like, you know, you go from being a nematode to having a spine and to having a brain, and there's reasons for homeostasis why that all happens. And what we're really seeing is this, you know, for a long time organizations just reacted, you know, the shelf emptied, they filled it, and that was the sort of neural net happening inside the nematode. But we're, we're at the point now where we're putting brains in these things, and they are going to have behaviors that the people operating them don't understand. And that's really going to be a fascinating thing to watch unfold. Yeah. Yeah. Alistair called it a prosthetic brain. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, if you think about it too, I mean, one of the things we, we were talking about, like how everyone talks about all the distributions, the different distributions of Hadoop is a real popular uh, news story here today. Mm -hmm. But from on the IQ scale, that's really kind of on the low end. And reminds me of the old uh, IT days. How many ports do you have on your uh, router? Yeah. The speeds and feeds, mm -hmm. it, they talked about features. Yeah. And now, no one says, hey, how many ports are on your device? It's more, much more business value centric. So yeah. one of the things we're seeing is that acceleration to business value. Um, do you have a view on that, what that business value conversation will, is like these days and your, your experiences are? Because that is really, at the end of the day, everything that's happening in this n old way is changing yeah. in a new way. If it doesn't have business value, yeah, well I was, I was running the Accenture's big data practice before I came over to O'Reilly, and the, I think where we are in that evolution is that we're still at the stage where we're focusing on infrastructure, and we're not yet focusing on the solutions or even understanding what to do with them. You know, we're getting to that point where we're starting to think that way, but the next step there is really to start getting the business people in these organizations to understand what this stuff's for. And that's where that and they're and they're just knocking on the door. They just yeah. you know they're just, they're just you know crawling in, in the uh, in, in, in the diapers at this yeah. point. And to them, infrastructure is irrelevant. They're yeah, I mean, we're, and we're out there talking. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this, this, you know, you, if you go out that on the show floor in three years, um, what I would hope we'll see is a lot more of the sponsors will be coming with solutions for specific industries rather than the infrastructure mm -hmm. that layers underneath them. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where I expect that would, where you'll see that yeah. manifest here. Yeah, Dave and I were talking last night as we were preparing for today, wrapping up yesterday and preparing today. It's like you know, almost all of our C CIO friends, if you ask them, if you could get up your data center tomorrow, would you do it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, in, you know, one comment I heard from CIO is, I'm in power and cooling facility meetings, right. budget meetings all yeah, day yeah, long yeah. On, on just that. So yeah. their, their time is focused on yeah. kind of mundane operations. And as a result, it's the business leaders or the functional areas that are driving all the, the change and, they, push, and they're, you know, they get dragged into it yeah, as yeah. opposed to driving yeah. it like they'd like to. Yeah, yeah so, so we were talking about shadow IT, we've been talking about that, and, and one of the things we're seeing is that with, you know, data has that same kind of yeah. institutional potential bottlenecks. I yeah. mean, uh, we were on a chat this morning with, about data governance, yeah, yeah. data quality, because now, oh, now you can save everything with storage. Now, is there a liability there? And then is that going to be a stumbling block? Mm -hmm. So where's the innovation come? So we're speculating. What's your take on that? Do you see shadow, like, like shadow IT, you see a shadow data market emerging. Yeah, I do, and I think, but I think it's a positive thing in a way. It's a driver. It's a driver to make change. And you know, one of the things that the, the organizational models always follow behind the requirements <laughs> yeah. and sort of a, um, yeah. big data, if you will, means that a lot of data is either co-accessible or co-located in ways that it didn't used to be, and the organizations are still divided up. So it's going to take time for the organizations to, to, to arrange themselves so that you can actually do this stuff. Let me ask you a question on the services side, because one of the things that Wikibon just put out is a market study on uh, the big data market. I forget what the number was. It's pretty massive, but 50% was services. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff Kelly put that 11 .4 out. 11.4 billion. 11.4 billion. That's, but that's the supply side, right? <clears throat> that doesn't count all the value that's being created down the you're chain. You're at Accenture, so you know <clears throat> that world of services that, that yeah. require, and it's everything from outsourcing to rolling out new projects, project-based rollouts. I remember the old days in the client server, that's a gravy train of business back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Now, those acceleration cycles are shorter. 
How is that market changing? Because now you have new boutique firms coming out. Yep. We talked to Info Objects earlier yesterday. Um, they're a services company just on open source. Yep. So you have a new ecosystem of players. They're not Capgemini. Right. You know, they're not the big boys. Yeah, the, um, the, to me the really interesting thing that'll happen is that as the enterprise space takes on the characteristics of DevOps and cloud computing internally and agility, sort of the short increments, it's going to create a completely different competition model for people that are trying to provide them services. And it is interesting because these platforms will span more broadly in the organization, yeah, so it's yeah. a different kind of management model there. <laughs> yeah, so they well, sort of have a bigger challenge. A big they have a bigger challenge platform-wise, but they want to get to a place where you could buy the services in much smaller chunks. So it's a, it's a weird kind of It mixture. is weird, I mean, because you know, we, John and I have talked about this a lot, and for a while there, people were sort of predicting the wake-up call to the Accentures of the world, but at the same time, guys, got, guys like Accenture, Deloitte, I guess you'd throw in PwC and IBM, they have unmatched capabilities yeah. to solve really hard problems. So, um, you know, without divulging any secrets of your past employer, you have you know, experience in that world. They are the, uh, the gold standard, you know, Accenture in particular, cut above sort of the rest. So I would see this as a huge opportunity for them. Oh, they're just they swarming. Oh, yeah, well, they reinvent or die kind of philosophy, right? I mean, these for the big boys. But they're helping people reinvent. I mean, I think that's their opportunity is to go into, the, we always say the practitioner is going to create more value than the suppliers. That 11.4 yeah. billion is a 10x factor in terms of the you know, the, end user space. The, the, thing that, the thing a company like them would struggle with or any of those right now is that the model for, the, for a very long time has been deliver solutions into a market that understands what the solution is. <laughs> and today there are neither solutions or customers that understand what they would be for. So you are in a place where the, they're unfamiliar with right now, which is delivering infrastructure and building custom solutions on top of it, which they haven't done for a long time. Yeah, so where, the, where the, they're, they're getting asked questions, okay, well how do we monetize this mm -hmm. data and turn yeah. it into value, and yeah, yeah. how do we become a data-driven organization? Yeah. That's a, uh, that's bigger. Yeah, yeah, it's much bigger. <laughs> my final question is um, just more. I'm I, my final question was a while ago. Now, but <laughs> yeah. Final, final question. Uh, it's like 40 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> my final, final question. What's, what's the coolest thing that you're seeing here? I know you got to be kind of politically correct, but I mean, you, you're overlooking the brand of Strata, which you know is an internal operational role within O'Reilly. But you also yeah. have to have the 20 mile stare and look at the next next valley you're going to conquer in terms of you know serving mm -hmm. a, a marketplace and the mountains you have to climb to get there. Um, so you have that. You have to have that 20 mile stare. Yeah, yeah. Um, what do you see out there for, the, for that, that look? I think there's some really interesting things going on. I mean, I think the, the notion of embedded analytics, that, which, which goes back to this idea of IQ and reaction in real time, and where the, the organization starts to react without the people even realizing it is, I think that's really interesting. Um, at, the, at the technology level, I think the stuff that's going on within memory is really interesting. The, uh, Greenplum's recent uh, in, uh, introduction of a, of, a, of a system that puts Hadoop and an MPP database on the same physical hardware at the same time. It sort of was an inevitability, but I'd been waiting for it to happen. I think that's really yeah. cool. And in software too, they took, yeah. took the clients out of the equation. And I think one other thing along those lines, sorry, is I think we'll see a, a gradual and increasingly rapid combination of what we think of as big data and um, historically what was high, high performance computing. The sort of the MPI worlds matching up with the Hadoop worlds. Yeah, I think HPC be meets uh, big data, right? Yeah. And we, we see some of that in the floor here. There's a company, DDN, we had mm -hmm. on that, yep. uh, that is, comes, comes from that high performance roots. Yeah, yeah. A lot of similarities. Yep. Uh, more structure, but a lot yeah. of it applies. Well, I think we'll see, what we'll see is a range is that we'll see systems coming out that are continuums across those things. Yep. So, so you can do, yeah. Mm. Okay, Jim Stockdale with uh, O'Reilly Media. Again, a uh, very impressive group. Uh, an amazing ramp up of the Strata brand just from, what, two years ago? Uh, it just seems like 10, because it's <laughs> been such a journey uh, for us. Thanks for having us yeah, in theCUBE. Um, we're excited to be here. Three day wall-to-wall -wall coverage here inside theCUBE, among other things. Keynotes are online at Strata, uh, Strata Conference. They have uh, talks, go on Twitter, a lot of great action uh, in the community. So